You found yourself on another episode of Locked On Bulls. And today we're going to talk about Terrence Mann calling DeMar DeRozan the hardest player in the NBA to guard. We're also going to build a starting five of the worst Bulls players ever in history. And we're going to talk about which former coach could be, I mean, former player could be a good coach. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze, and currently holder of the world's smallest microphone <laughs> on top of all of that. Uh, and he's also host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESP 1000. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central. Uh, but, Pat, let's go ahead and get into it, man. Terrence Mann on the Paul George podcast called... Uh, DeMar DeRozan, the hardest player to guard in the NBA. Now, this is a little bit after he was called one of the most overrated players in the NBA. <laughs> it's always to tell it two, two different as the media views DeMar DeRozan as one way. His peers seem to view him as another. What yeah. do you what do you what does this make you think, bro? I mean, I, I'm not surprised how many times have we heard that DeMar DeRozan is no matter how much you prepare for that pump fake, no matter how much you prepare for um basically how he plays his game and how he gets his buckets, you can do everything perfectly and it will not matter. Yeah. And so, I mean, that, that makes it tough for, for guys to go out there and defend him. And I'm not surprised that people view him that way. I mean, they literally go into defensive meetings. We've heard multiple teams talk about this, where they say you have to pump fake, pump fake, pump fake, be prepared for all of that pump fake. We, and, and then when you think he's done pump faking, he's going to pump fake again. We've seen that here, Bulls fans. So we know what's coming in those situations. But it's just too hard to stay down because it's not logical for somebody to pump fake that many times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it works I mean, so well for him. It does. I mean, and I, I know that it is a lot of pump fakes. I don't want to overlook or act like DeMar doesn't pump fake the ball a lot because he does. But I think also it's more than just the pump fake, right? It's the footwork. It's the shoulders. Like he yeah. really, he, he, he uses his whole body to commit to the pump fake. It's it's wild. It's, it's great. He, he's very methodical about it. And I'm sure it gets frustrating because more, you, you know, the spots that DeMar wants to get to and you know how he wants to get there and what he's going to do when he get when he gets there. And you still can't stop him more times than that, which is crazy. No, 100 percent. And I think that that's the main thing to take away from all of this is, you know, when you look at a guy like I know it's easy to sit there and joke on DeMar and DeMar is not, you know, he's not what we're looking for in a player and the, and the bulls don't need a guy like DeMar DeRozan in the long run. And all of those, it's fine and dandy, but like, you can't deny that he's one of the best scorers that's in this league. You can't deny that he's one of the uh, um, one that has some of the best footwork under the bucket. You can't mm -hmm. deny that how he gets to the bucket, and how he's able to finish through the contact is, is unbelievable at times. And I mean, listen, there's a reason why there's a portion of bears fans that look, I mean, sorry, bears fans, bulls fans that look at us in, in confusion when we say that what the Bulls need to do to allow other players to move into the right spot is to move on from DeMar, it's because DeMar's a really good player. And yeah. there's a reason that he has that spot in that starting lineup. So I'm not surprised at all that Terrence Mann finds him as one of the hardest players to guard in the NBA. I think most people would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, just, it just speaks to – and DeMar, like I said, the way that he plays his game – the way he takes care of himself, he's he's probably going to he's never going to have a season average in low, lower than 20 points per game, probably unless he like joins the team that he's like the fourth option on. But like he's just DeMar is going to be very consistent. He's one of the most consistent players in the NBA. Um, And the way that he does use that pump fake, his body, his footwork, everything. It's why that, you know, when the Bulls don't have anything going offensively and we're struggling to score. He it, it, the ball is usually going to be in his hands because he's going to find a way to either put points on the board or get to the free throw line or do both. So now here's the hard part about this, right? How do you quantify what DeMar DeRozan does as 
when it's the best time to use it. Because mm. me and you have both talked about this one on here and on our own platforms that DeMar DeRozan is an amazing scorer, but there are times where he over where, where he's too committed to being the only option on the offense. How do you balance that out if you're a, whoever the coach is, but in this case, Billy Donovan? I think you. that's why having a playmaker there and point guard is important for the Bulls, right? It's important. And I think you also want to move without the ball. Um, I think you want to use DeMar as a decoy before because DeMar has such gravity, teams are going to have to guard him. Yeah. Um, but I do think you, you want to – a, you need to trust your players. They need to show that, that they can be trusted as well. But, like, you want to draw up a scheme where the ball moves freely. And that's why, like, last year with the, with Billy Donovan and the whole random offense, I hope that it meant more motion. And it really didn't. It, it really wasn't that random. The only thing random about it is how our team is going to stop us today. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I hope, that, you know, you get a and little bit And they figured it out 42 times. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. so. I don't know, man. Like, I, I just see DeMar as such an asset to this team. I see him as a guy who is an unstoppable force. But how do you utilize an unstoppable force in the right way? And I don't I think that's the one part where the Bulls kind of have figured it out, but the, the time where they figured it out the most was when everyone else was hurt and all you had to do was rely on DeMar DeRozan to be DeMar DeRozan. Now you have to get him to work within the team dynamic, and I think that's where it starts to get tough. And it's like DeMar said, listen, you. I think this is the one part that maybe we've never credited DeMar with. He had to make probably a pretty big adjustment in his mindset to play with a guy like Zach Levine. He's never had a scorer next to him that can score like that. Kyle Lowry, yeah, he can score, but like he's not a scorer. He's That'd never had somebody who could probably put up offense as well as he could if you just left the ball in his hands. I mean, I, I always go back to San Antonio DeMar, who was more of a facilitator. I think that, that definitely having that stopgap between Toronto and, and coming to Chicago, being there in, in San Antonio for those years, I think it definitely helped him prepare for that a little bit more because even though, yeah, he didn't play with a score like Zach in San Antonio, uh, that system, you're going to move the ball around everybody. He deferred at times to the players who aren't nearly as good as Zach Levine. So yeah. I think that definitely helped in that area as well. And I think, you know, initially when we were rocking and rolling, when we had Lonzo and, every, and everything, we we're number one team in the East, I think people forget before Zach got hurt, Zach and DeMar were basically neck and neck in stats. Like DeMar averaged less than one shot more per, per Zach. He was averaging a couple more points, but they were right there. And then look at last year. Their numbers are almost the exact same, almost the same number of shots per game, almost shot it at the same percentage. So um, I think that he's adapted well. And I think that just being in a system where facilitation is the key, moving the ball, everybody gets their touches, help DeMar, uh, prepare DeMar to play with Zach Levine. So now here's the question. Do we have that? Do we have what is is that guy here in Chicago that's going to be able to do just that? Is I that Javon so Carter? I, is that Kobe White? I mean, I don't think it's that like they, they're going to help. I think Javon Carter is absolutely going to help. And I think that, you know, also having uh, non-reluctant shooters and like the things I said, moving the ball around. But I think it all comes back to Billy Donovan and the, the, the culture that he's building in that offensive system. He relies heavily on DeMar. DeMar basically gets to do whatever he wants to do. And Zach at the same time, too, when he has the ball in his hand. And I think for me, it all goes back to coaching because that's a philosophy thing. And Pop wouldn't allow that. Spo wouldn't allow that. So when you look at – and I, I know Billy Donovan is not as good coaches as those guys at all. I'm not trying to put him in the same <laughs> I was same about to be like, hold on but I'm just I'm just going to say how important coaching is in that. I think sometimes as basketball fans, we can overlook – exactly how important coaching is because we just look at it as like these players these superstars go out and they kind of dictate things but when you have a coach that establishes that type of identity on a team everybody buys into it yeah i think i think that's where it starts at i agree with you yeah. on that right like as much as i i i shoot billy bale in a lot of the situations where it's like okay but if zach levine knocks down that wide open three we win that game. Or if, you know, DeMar DeRozan is able to knock down that shot. And or we're win. able to inbound a ball like we played basketball before. This is a bunch of things. You know? yeah, yeah, all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, as much as I'll shoot him bail, there's not enough of a commitment to going out there and running Billy's system. That's the one thing that I will say that I think Pat Bev brought 
where he was like, mm-hmm. Billy's smart. You just got to do what he wants to, wants you to do. That's just not, to me, that's not an NBA way. That's a college way. And he was a great college coach, right? Back-to-back championships. He, he, yeah. he was a great college coach. But it... Mike's out, bro. Yeah. Hey, that's what happens when you're rolling with the little guy. No, but in the NBA, that, that's what happened. You're not going to just have guys who are going to just do what you want them to do. These guys have their own careers in their mind as well. And, you know, your game plan might it, it dictate me getting five, six assists in a game and not scoring the basketball. So, yeah. That's we'll fact. see, man. We'll see. Man, we'll see. We'll see, definitely. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to actually build – a terrible starting lineup with former Pools players, which this is going to be fun. Uh, before <laughs> we do that, though, we got to talk to you guys about one of our sponsors, and that is Ibotta. Ibotta, I'm sorry, picking up burgers and hot dogs for a summer barbecue. You know you're already doing it, so why not get cash back for it with Ibotta? Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Enter the link uh, or or it, in, either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. The average Ibotta user earns up to $120 per year that could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, or you can use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing. That or go to that game you've been dying to go to or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Uh, You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering uh, listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta using the promo code LOCKED when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use code LOCKED. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKED. All right, Pat, as you try to work it out there with the world's smallest microphone in the world. Hey, man. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, man. (laughs) With that said, man, uh, we talked about this and and, and teased this a little bit yesterday on that episode. We want to build a Starting five, we're going to have a draft of the worst Bulls players. Are we doing ever? Are we just doing the last decade? What, 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 what's, Ooh, the, what's the parameters here? That's tough. I'm not going to lie to you. Let's say, let's not, let's say, ooh, ever is tough. Because ever is, a, there's been a lot of bad ones. Let's say from 2010 up, because that still is enough players for us. That to is draft more than enough. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right on that one. Um, damn, I'll let you crazy. have the first pick. Let's do it, man. I'll let you have the first pick, dog. Oh, man. Um, hmm. I want to go bad here. Oh, it's easy. Number one pick in this starting point guard, Marquise T. Dang it. <laughs> you got me there. I, I mean, listen, Marcus Teague, one of the worst guys to ever be drafted by the Chicago Bulls, um, had no hope at ever being a effective point guard, uh, lived up to nothing that his brother Jeff did. <laughs> and lived uh, up to nothing. I believe his NBA career best highlight is uh, Jeff Teague putting him on his butt as he crossed him over. Yeah, basically. That's a tough one. Uh, with my first pick here. I wanted to go point guard there. You know what? I think I will. Uh, a guy who showed uh, absolutely no promise and a uh, recent pick by the Bulls, by the way, last five years and uh, really had high hopes for him. One of the highest views on my channel, but never was tall enough to uh, see into an NBA locker room. Let me get Devon Dotson starting point guard. Oh, here. okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and solidify my backcourt with the wing player here. I'm going uh, Chandler Hutchinson. <laughs> if you can't see, I'm doing the hand in front of the face. I remember that. <laughs> Mr. One Man's Trash. Uh, oh, you know what said? Yeah. One yeah. Man's Trash is another man's treasure. Chandler Absolutely. Hutchinson, one of the worst. And I had high hopes for him, too. I remember this is how long ago Chandler Hutchinson got picked, right? I remember hitting Chandler Hutchinson up on Facebook. And he responded to me. And I was like, hey, yo, man, you wearing my number 15, man? 
Let's do it. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go out here and get this mug. I got a lot of hope in you. Feel like you young pip out here. He was like, oh, thanks, man. And I was like, don't F this up. <laughs> he did. He messed it up. He messed it all up. Maybe I ruined this career. Maybe I don't know what. About this. The Bulls could, in that draft, could have drafted Michael Porter Jr. and Anthony Simons. You think? Or Jalen Brunson. You think? Do, do you think? I mean, my God, we I can't even. Uh, I can't even with that one. That's a good one, though. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with the bust of all busts here in Chicago. Um, I believe he's in the last 10 years here. Uh, he definitely played within the last 10 years here. I might need to fact check this one. Uh, but I want the big man down low. Give me the big fella. Give me Mr. $38 million dollars. On the contract. Let me get Cristiano, oh, Felicio, Cristiano Felicio as my starting uh, terrible center out here. What are, the, what are the thoughts on a Felicio out here? That, that's terrible. That's <laughs> just, that's that's crazy. Uh, I'm all right, also but, willing to just draft Felicio's head shape. If that's a possibility, just draft that. Because the silhouette of that is probably better defense. Because it will scare children and hoopers alike away. That's... That's okay. Well, that's wild. Um, <laughs> we said you said since 2010, right? Since 2010. When is he drafted? Who? Felicio. When's Fel- when Felicio? Felicio wasn't there? drafted. We signed him, but I mean, he's played within the last 10 years. Oh, so okay. Did. All right. That's you're close covered enough. it. Oh, yeah, you definitely terrible. covered it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and solidify my three now Denzel Gum Valentine. Dang it. The gums are out there. The man. gums are out now. You got good wing depth right now. You got yeah. Denzel at the two. T get the one. Uh, the gums are terrifying in itself. That's like watching an episode. I got, of Attack listen, on I got Titan. the hairline and the gums. We got Chandler yeah. Hutchinson and Denzel Valentine. That's like watching an episode of Attack on Titan, man. Like that guy will bite you. You got to watch yourself. Um, I got to get some wing depth in here, man. What do I got? I got Devon Dotson. I got the big guy. You've taken a lot of bad wings. <sighs> Let me go with the uh, the man, uh, the myth, the legend, the we like, Paul Zipser. Let me get some Paul oh, Zipser action pick. in there. That's a good pick. Okay. Okay. I see you. I see you there. I see that, and I'm going to raise you. I'm going to go ahead and get my, my four now. I got everything else locked in. Eric Murphy is going to be my next draft pick there. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, hey. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. I have to know who is Eric Murphy. <laughs> I'm not even joking, bro. Eric Murphy. We drafted Eric Murphy in 2013 with the second round pick, 49th overall. He played for Flo- with for Florida in college. That's insane. I, That's a deep cut. Did he bro. never play? Did he never play? Uh, let's see. Let's Did he play a, a second? We might need to put parameters on guys that actually touch the Bulls court out here. I'm not going to lie. See. I don't think he has any real minutes. Let's <laughs> take a look. He played 24 games for oh the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> in, in 2013-14, he played 24 games with averages of .3 points per game, .2 blocks per game, .3 rebounds per game, and .1 assists per game. Not a whole number in sight, bro. <laughs> Not a whole number in sight is crazy. Hold up. <laughs> this man <the> average fractions. <laughs> oh wow. Oh man. That, that is, is actually that funny. is good. That is good. Um, so what do I have right now? I gotta think here. I gotta think here. What do I have right now? I have Devon Dotson. I've got Paul Zipser. So I've only got three players right now. And yeah, I've got uh, I've, so I need a four right now. I got my five in Shrek. I need a four right now. Oh, I got a good one for you. I got a dominant one for you right here. Woo! Because the goal of this is to make the worst team. Ladies and gentlemen, with the fourth overall pick. The Chicago Trash selects Cameron Bearstow in his hand. Damn it, that was going to be my starting <laughs> finish. <laughs> Dang it. Damn. Cameron Bearstow and the hair. 
Cameron Bearstow had literally nothing attractive about his game. <laughs> the Bulls drafted him because they were like, we got nothing left. We got nothing. <laughs> we got, we got nothing. nothing. Dang. By All the right. way, just in case you guys are wondering, also in that draft, the Chicago Bulls did draft Yusuf Nurkic and Gary Harris. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's see what I can do here. What? What terrible players do I have left said, at that, my? That was gonna be my five. Jesus! Oh Their man, snow was oh. all time bad. I'm not gonna lie. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, easy. Mister dunked on himself. Marco Simonovich is my starting five. You know what though? I was gonna select Marco. <laughs> But I think for this game, Marco probably dominates. That probably makes you a better He's the team. franchise player on the team. He's, He's the, the franchise, franchise He's player. He's the franchise player. You have to pay him $350 million at some point. <laughs> That's what you got with him. Um, let's see. Let's see. That's That's a good pick. That's a good pick. I thought about going Marco, too. This is where it gets tough here now. Because now it's like, you know, when, oh. you, get, when you get back to 10-11, mm -hmm. it's still good. You took Jimmy in the second round. That's not bad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm trying to think. Bust. Bust that we got. Does it have to be just drafted players here? No, or it doesn't have to be drafted. This is just players. worst Chicago Bulls. Worst of all Chicago time. Bulls players since. Oh, I got you then. I got you then. I'm gonna finish it off with this because right now I have my. I need a two. I need a two right here. Oh, come on! This is easy. Mister chucks up the shots himself, and I think this makes the teams a little more even. Antonio Blakeney, come on down. Oh man, he, hey, he's the guard version of Marco Simone. Hey, bro, hey, bro. He's the guard <laughs> version of Marco Simone. Seventy points a game. That is hilarious. Versus oh, man. himself. That is a chair. He, he did that against a chair. Um, I love it, man. It, hey, y'all let us know in the comments which team is worse. I think that – I'm not going to lie. I think my team will still be worse because Marco's – I am for the, or, uh, Antonio Blakeney, but with size. And I almost want to say Denzel Valentine probably could guard Antonio Blake. True, but Cristiano Felicio could guard. Felicio's getting 20 and 15 against Marco. Really? Oh, yeah, you Cristiano think, Felicio's wait, getting you 20 think Marco's that bad? Bro, me and you have two dunks on Marco Simonovic each. Cristiano Felicio's getting... <laughs> Only if Antonio Blakeney throws that weird alley-oop that he continued to catch. Bro, and he kicked out, too. Like, why are you kicking your foot out on alley-oop, bro? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Mama, look what I can do. That's that's, that's what you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Hey, you want to know what's sad? Oh man, that's we funny. just picked 10 players, and most of them we drafted, and we limited it to 10 years, and there's so many more. And then you wonder why we're not at, at, at we're, we're, why we are where we are, because we have drafted terribly for and I'm gonna be honest with you. Here's the problem. Like, that's not even a just we drafted terribly. That's a – you couldn't even – Spo couldn't develop those guys. No. Maybe no. Marco. Marco Spo probably couldn't I develop. Think, I'm not out on Marco completely. I, yeah, I, I think I do think that uh, Spo, a, a pop, would have definitely developed Marco some. And here's what I'll say, too. Well, Marco's out on Marco completely because he took himself out of the league. But there's That's that. true. That's true. <laughs> um, I do think the right coach could have turned Antonio Blakeney at least to a catch-and-shoot guy off the bench. But that size, though. Antonio Blakeney's definitely That's shorter true. than me. Yeah, uh, I mean, listen, J.J. Barre was out here giving people buckets. In a very different NBA. <laughs> it was the same year that they won the title. What do you mean? <laughs> hey, hey, that bug D Wade said we had no answers for Lou. None, bro. It's so funny. Like we we at some point we have to have a conversation on the most unlikely players who saved a team's playoff run. JJ Berea, that playoff Ooh, that's run. That's a good one. Was ridiculous. Well, bro. I mean, he, that was that yeah, no, that's a good one. 
That's a good topic. Hey, write that down. <laughs> yeah, we're running out of stuff to talk about. It. You know what? Like, write that down. Two of them, it happened on the same team because the one year it was it was J.J. Barea, and don't forget, Roddy Brubar was giving them buckets too the year that they beat the Heat. <laughs> like, <laughs> the names you pulling out today. Hey, thousand points to Hayes. Hayes is pulling some names out of the hat right now, man. Bro, I'm just saying, bro. These are players <laughs> that you will literally never remember, bro. Like, it's <laughs> crazy. Said his name was bro. Roddy <laughs> Bubar. Is that how you say Bubar? <laughs> Bubar. Hey, hey, it don't matter. It don't matter. It he don't was giving he was giving them buckets that 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 year. Oh my God, that's funny, bro. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Uh, That's funny. I don't even remember what the last topic we were supposed to get into. Former coach. It don't yes. matter, bro. Hey, listen, we got five minutes left in this show. Are we really going to do this? <laughs> Save that topic for another day. We got to get to one more. What, what's our minimum? 27 minutes, right? We got to get to one Wow. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Hey, there's too much inside baseball. Oh, my bad. Man, my bad. My bad. You're giving, you're giving away too many my bad. details. Y'all didn't bro. watch this episode. Y'all didn't watch this episode. No, I just, I right, listen. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not. Hey, we got, we got Yannick and Gakwe, bro. We got brother. Yannick and Gakwe, bro. Like I'm the only one right now, bro. I'm hyped right now, dog. I'm literally just sitting here, like the 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 Bulls should be excited that we got Yannick and Gakwe because for another day, nobody's focused on the fact that we're running it back for the third year. Except us. We're focused on that heavily. I mean, it's kind of our job to be focused on it, but it is what it is, man. I mean, Oh, hey. man, I love it, dog. I love it. I love it. Hey, man, follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls. You can follow me on everything at Path the Designer. And uh, let us know in the comments below which team you think is the worst of the worst starting fives for the Bulls. Want to know what's tough? We've seen teams that basically are those starting fives. Pretty much, pretty much. It's where's Walt Lemon guys, Jr. when you need him. And then people wonder why we have PTSD as Bulls fans. But thank you guys so much for tuning in, man. You guys can follow me at. Did you already give your social media? I don't. I even did. Remember I you. did. Keep okay. going. You follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z E. Uh, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Bulls. We'll be back tomorrow, cutting up again. I'm sure it's going to be some foolishness because that's just what we do. Uh, <laughs> for Path the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked On Bulls, man. We out, y'all. Peace. Peace. Did I just prove that size doesn't matter?